The Book of Recollections, Episode 5, Choices by Dysylvania. Hey, Book of Recollections here. You know me. Good, good, good. Now, straight to the story, and let's see what all the fuss is with the giant cocks. Um, roosters. Giant roosters. While our gang was looking for Bob, an individual who was supposed to hand them an object for Monkey in order to repay their debt, they ended up in the Cloud District's Grand Commerce Center. In the bazaar, Pax met Albus, one of his exes. Albus, apparently still having strong feelings towards Pax, couldn't control them. Which, for a wild sorcerer, is the most dangerous thing. He called Pax a big cock and, at that point, Sparks flew from his hands, breaking pots in his vicinity and causing four ignorant roosters to grow in size. The rapid transformation affected the minds of the animals, throwing them into a frenzy. Finally, a cockfight. Roosters, whatever, you dirty mind. People began to scream and run away, calling the guards. Some dashed through the bazaar to bring others to witness the battle. All the while, kids stared in awe at the display. Pax manifested from his right hand the golden feather he used to forge the marks of acceptance and, as he raised it to his forehead, he was enveloped in gold and purple sparkles. The magic revealed his dark armor adorned with golden filigree, complete with a green cape. The feather morphed into a superb golden sword whose radiance engulfed the half-elf's other hand, giving birth to a shield which bore the symbols of Greenspring. The roosters rushed towards the party. Shaglashak tried to reason with one of the birds, but his words had no effect on the enraged beast that attacked him. The rooster tried to strike Shaq, but missed, as Shaq's serpentine reflexes took him out of the mad bird's way. Kate dodged another incoming chicken and spun around, releasing an arrow straight into the heart of Shaq's assailant. The Yuan Ti put the giant bird out of his misery. Pax rushed towards the rooster that was attacking Gregory, while asking Albus to do something about the whole situation. The big-headed individual got even more flustered and another bolt of magic escaped his body, barely missing Pax, who took down the giant rooster. All was not well, as Albus's magical bolt missed Pax, but hit Kate and, as a result, her hair started falling out. It was Genevieve's turn to take down one of the birds. After a masterful spin, she plunged her dagger into its neck, a fountain of blood erupting from the wound. With glee, Genevieve placed one knee on the gushing wound and tied up the bird before putting its lifeless body onto her shoulder. Enraged by the death of the chicken, Shaklashak locked in on the position of Albus, blaming him for the needless slaughter and rushed towards him. Before the big-headed sorcerer could register Shak's attack, he found himself lifted up by the scruff of his neck. Terror gripped his heart, causing pink bubbles to emanate from his body that smelled awkwardly nice of bubblegum and cherry. The final rooster bolted towards Pax, but a small, cute girl broke from the crowd, running towards the half-elf. With the sweetest and most innocent voice, she asked him not to hurt the chicken because it was her best friend. A man, carrying a mirror, was making his way through the crowd, trying to deliver the object to one of the shops. Some people just want to see their work done and can't be bothered. Kate, with her knee on the ground and a handful of hair in her hand, was staggered by the fact that she couldn't see her reflection in that mirror, no matter how hard she tried. Any questions she might have had disappeared as soon as Gregory addressed the group, telling them that they didn't need to kill the animal, just knock them unconscious. Saying that a bit earlier could have helped Genevieve keep her clothes unstained with blood. With a swift motion of his hand, he grabbed the hand axe dangling from his belt and threw it, pommel first at the bird. It hit the rooster's head with a crack. The giant bird fell to the ground and, in order to make sure that it didn't die, Gregory asked Shifty, the blob that attached itself to him in the tomb of time, if he could be able to help. The dark purple creature sloshed its way to the unconscious creature and resuscitated it. Pax's gaze fell on Shifty and he realized that its body was similar to the waters of the Sabbath River, but, as he was about to say something, he was interrupted by the owner of the chickens. The man began to lament about how he wouldn't be able to feed his family. Pax offered to buy the roosters. The salesman demeanor changed slightly as the two began to haggle. In the middle of their transaction, Pax saw another individual, draped in robes and wearing a porcelain mask, staring at them from within the gathered crowd of people. Apparently, this is the a la mode way to dress the storyteller, a, a new fashion movement that has taken Greenspring by storm. 
While Pax was counting the agreed number of coins, the person carrying the mirror made his way closer, revealing themselves as a diurnal, his features carrying the same undefined characteristics as Persephone's. The diurnal was slowly making their way to the center of the square chanting, Be my soul worthy to ascend, as I shed this sinful body behind. Pax's hair stood up on the back of his neck as a humanoid with dark eyes and dark hair, their body covered in religious markings, revealed themselves from the other side of the looking glass. That, my dear reader, is the flame, and it so happens to be Pax's arch nemesis. Scorching tendrils escaped from the mouth of the humanoid, forming a giant ball of raging flames. Pax tried to cry out for people to back away, but it was too late. As the fireball exploded, time moved slower and the burning tendrils engulfed the square. The diurnal creature who was carrying the mirror exploded in a shower of radiant energy as their soul failed to achieve ascension. The merchant, that was still standing next to Pax, fell on his knees as his skin and muscles began to melt away, his face a horrible grimace of agony. Albus's body turned charcoal black and, as his body peeled away from Shaq's grasp, the energy absorbed by the flame causing the remains to explode yet again, engulfing Shaq who fell to the ground. Before darkness overtook him, the beastman's gaze fell on Vash, who found shelter behind the charred remains of one of the roosters. Shifty rushed towards Shaq and attached itself to him, breaking a piece of its wobbly body to heal his wounds. A few seconds passed before Shaq's eyes opened once more. There was a moment of silence and dread as everyone tried to register what happened. The silence was broken by the cries of a woman coming out of the crowd and approaching the burned body of the little girl. Pax turned around and seeing the body fell to his knees knowing that there was nothing that could be done. Soon, pandemonium erupted as people woke up from their catatonic state and began rushing into the square trying to find their dead. Wailings of broken hearts were heard as parents mourned their children, widows their partners. Kids cried out for their parents while they stared at their remains. A breeze made its way through the square gently, breaking the charred remains into slithers of dust and carried them away. Gregory grabbed the rooster that the little girl had asked Pax not to hurt, which after Albus's death turned back to normal size and walked towards her. He crouched down, lightly lifted her arms and with care placed the bird on her chest, wrapping her lifeless arms in a hug around the bird. As he stared at the horror, Pax's happy-go-lucky facade shattered. Anger surged to the half-elf's body, and he snapped at Grace, revealing not only the accountability he took over the massacre, but also how much he abhorred the flame and all they stood for. Genevieve, Shaq, bald Kaith, was otherwise unharmed, and Gregory got together to assess their wounds. The crowd parted, making way for a young human dressed in lavish cloaks, escorted by four guards. The man had smooth skin and shoulder-long jet-black hair. Is? Is that Hebdom? Oh, now that's a plot twist. Jen and Gregory attacked the man, who in turn ordered his guards to seize them. People were yelling, stupefied that they dared attack a Hebdom, all the while Shaq seemed to be the only one to understand that the man was not the same Hebdom they knew. Pax arrived just as Gregory was subdued by the guards. But from the mixed shouts of the group, Hebdom realized what was going on and ordered his guards to release Gregory, then introduced himself as Adam and, alongside Pax, he invited them to Silent Bay Tavern to both hear them out and offer some answers. Before heading towards the tavern, Pax approached the guards and found out intel on the attack. Apparently expected but not located in time and where some of the responsibles were held, Pax asked the guards not to kill them. At least, not until they got a confession, requesting to receive a transcript of it. Pax joined the group as they made way to the tavern, where Adam offered to pay for their rooms and drinks, stating that he might have an idea of exactly who they were. After realizing the disheveled state in which all of them were, they decided that it would be best to take a bath before regrouping in Adam's room to eat and talk. The group reconvened in Adam's room. Noticing that Pax's lavish robes and flamboyants were set aside for a more militaristic look. With food on the table and drinks being served, Pax explained the group's predicament. Adam told the party that Hebdom felt remorse for what had happened a long time ago. He explained to them that Lucius was actually not too dissimilar from Gregory, both of them wanting to uplift humanity's status. Pax promised to hand them the marks, but only after they acquainted themselves with this new world and after their minds will have had enough time to adjust. He would be more than willing to allow them to help him in the fight against the flame. 
Before heading to their rooms to sleep the day's hardships away, Keith asked if there were any documents that would tell them what had happened in the past 437 years. Pax agreed to take them to the university, where those documents could be found. Gregory found it rather hard to fall asleep as a knock came on his door from Shakla Shak, who invited him to journey into the Midnight Forest to help find traces of the snake folk. But in order to find any answers, a ritual had to be performed. A blood ritual, which required a special kind of ichor, which Gregory possessed. Not wanting to let his friend down, Gregory joined Shak. The two snuck out of Greenspring and entered the Midnight Forest. Along the road, Gregory opened up to Shaq about what it meant to be a good human, about friendship and understanding, even in the face of treason. But Shaq couldn't comprehend the meaning of help without the reward in sight, and as Gregory kept talking, Shaq Lashak's nostrils were assaulted by the poignant smells of warm wood and honey, the smell of power emanating from Gregory's every pore. Shaq Lashak steered the conversation towards other matters, trying to find out if the humans were ever known to create secret passages into their settlements, letting slip that he would have a hard time re-entering without the permit. Oh, did you catch that? Neither did Gregory. Shaq used the singular. Oh, Shaq used Nake you. What are you planning? Gregory had no idea if or where such entrances existed. 437 years ago, they barely had sewers. Gregory spotted the silhouette of the humanoid dressed in robes and wearing the porcelain mask standing not too far behind and looking at them. The storyteller makes their presence felt yet again! Gregory pointed out to Shaq that they're being followed, but still they walked further into the forest, even helping a wounded squirrel along the way. The two arrived in front of a massive tree, which Shakla Shak asked Gregory if he would be willing to remove some of its bark as a container for the blood. Axe in hand, Gregory started chopping, but from behind the tree, the sound of something larger than the world began to make its way to them from a nearby cave. A colossal snake so large that Gregory could not see its end slithered its way out of the cavern. The monstrous creature spoke in a guttural tongue that only Shakla Shak understood. Jormungandr, that was the snake's name, divulged to Shak that it had waited hundreds of years for this moment, and that it was famished. As Gregory shook Shak to wake him from his stupor, the great serpent uttered two words, Uruz Slatar, which caused the Yuanti to pounce at Gregory. A battle ensued with the beastman on one side trying to suck the power out of Gregory and the human unwilling to kill his friend. All the while, the giant serpent's body continued to coil around itself, creating an arena of sorts around the two that kept fighting with admirable vigor and skill. However, it wasn't only a battle between warriors, but also a battle of wills. Even hurt, even sucked dry of his power, Gregory appealed to Shaq's human nature, even called him a friend. But the snake man's allegiance to the giant serpent was stronger. Shaq bit Gregory, his snake fangs piercing his skin. The human tried a few more times to knock Shaq off, but the beast man was simply too fast, too strong, rejuvenated by the power he sucked out of Gregory. The time for the final blow came, but something deep inside Shaq stopped him from beheading Gregory. Maybe it was the fact that Gregory forgave him. But Jormungandr, the world snake, wanted the deed done. And although Shaq urged it to spare Gregory, the giant serpent pushed Shaq out of the way, then rose to the skies above and plunged towards Gregory, the hungry fangs-filled maw being the last thing the poor man saw. Then, darkness. Oh, I need a break. So many things happened, I need to process this. This session of recollecting has tired me immensely. It even left me without any snappy retorts. I need to, um, uh, recollect myself a bit. Until next time, dear audience, and keep away from snakes. This was the recap for episode 5 of Vim, as told by the Book of Recollections. I was David Moscovich, your Vim recap narrator. If you'd like to join us as Vim, The Tale of Immortality premieres, tune in on Sundays at 5pm UTC on youtube.com Dysylvania. New recaps drop every Friday evening, and remember, 
Every subscribe helps keep the magic alive. Thanks for sticking with us, good day, good night, and don't let the vampires bite.